Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress and also Chess to Progress. You may want to check my other channel. This video is about an evening with Grandmaster Nigel Short. The Dublin Chess Club, Dublin in Ireland, was founded, founded in the year 1867. So this year, 2017, they celebrate their 150th anniversary. And as part of the celebrations, they invited Grandmaster Nigel Short for a lecture. Not just a Grandmaster, but the World Championship Challenger from 1993, when Short played for the world title against Garry Kasparov. Short had prepared some games. He showed games from a tournament that was played in 1867, so 150 years ago. And one of the participants was an Irishman, George MacDonald. So he followed George MacDonald's progress in that tournament. George MacDonald was a strong player. They did not have any ratings in those years, but it's been estimated that his rating was about 2525, so Grandmaster Strength. The game I'm showing you here today was against James Fraser from that tournament, and we'll hear Nigel Short analyzing this game for the audience. Let's not worry too much about the opening. The opening is kind of okay, a bit straightforward. B5 is a, is a, a good move there. He pushes, pushes, oh, tactics, you see. And now suddenly, it's a slight problem for white because if he takes on F6, B takes C3, he's just got a, a poor position. Black is uh, doing well, so he goes forward. And Okay, it's very typical chess for the time that they played uh, in uh, you know a very direct way, absolutely without any sophistication. So you know he goes forward, and does he have adequate compensation? I think the answer is uh, no. So bishop e6, and this was not necessary, um, but uh, it's okay. Um, you could play bishop d6 just straight off here. I have to intervene here for one second. Bishop d6 immediately is not a good move because of this nice variation. Bishop d3, threatening checkmate, g6, knight of six check, king g7, and then there's a piece hanging on c6, so white wins a, wins a piece in that variation. So it looks like the Scot, James Fraser, made the right decision to take on d5 first before playing bishop d6. He took bishop d6, it's also all right. And now, this is really fascinating to me. <laughs> This one actually had me laughing my head off when I saw these next couple of moves. So what do you what would you do here with white? Oh rook f5. Rook f5. Rook f5. What a this is the <laughs> screaming out. Screaming out. This is the yeah, okay, okay. Double in chess. Here it is. It comes, you know. This is you know, I think a normal person plays h4 and h5 and then takes and gets the queen in the game. But what do you do if it's 1867? You put your rook on priest and say, Take, Take me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, it's so optimistic, it's so ridiculous, this. Um, I don't really have words for it. Um, you know, I mean, lots of, of things are possible. Queen there is okay. So he sticks the rook in. Black is developing. He brings the queen over. And now this is, this is fantastic. The next sequence is, is just, I mean, this is really the highlight of the game. So far it's been 
vaguely sensible. There have been the odd pawn dropping off here and there, random rook sacrifices, but it's, it's all within um, understandable chess. Now, okay, a, this is a bad move um, because black, white can play bishop b5 and this is uh, an awkward pin. That actually holds up um, the, the black advance, it, it actually holds up black's counterplay altogether. So this is just a terrible move, really. But uh, this is not exploited, he just pushes. <laughs> now takes queen in, and there's rook e2 coming, and there's queen takes a2 coming, and there is, you know, various other things coming. Rook e2 is actually really pretty annoying. And where is white's mate? Where is white's attack? Oh, that's easy. You play knight e4, rook takes d6, knight f6, mate. Ah, okay. So that's it. <laughs> I'm sure you must be a descendant of this guy. I mean, honestly. I mean, all the ridiculous ideas are coming from over here. I mean, just so primitive. <laughs> rook yeah, so as you said, easy. 94 and Rook takes uh, yeah, yeah. But I would, I, would have, I wouldn't have sacked the, the exchange. For yeah, you would have prepared. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that, that, that's why there was so much more sophisticated 150 years on. <laughs> <laughs> we try and disguise it a little yeah. bit. A little bit, you know. So it takes. And then you realized, oh, um, 94 is probably going to be stopped, you know, I mean, you can take it. So I'll push the pawn instead. Queen takes, h5. But Nigel, everyone loves a winner. I mean, this is... Right. Okay, so he has a, a threat uh, here. Any suggestions for what might be a good move for black here? I'll ask the, who is the, who claims to be the weakest player in the room? <laughs> Black has some good possibilities. One of them is not very difficult. Yeah, rook e2. Yeah, rook e2. And then h takes, h takes g, g6. Yeah. But you've got the, the right idea. Queen a1 check um, is not bad. After this, king c2 is met by queen takes rook. Knight b1 is met by rook e2 and mate. Not difficult. Not difficult at all. Instead, this guy went back. Now, Jonathan O'Connor, what do you want to do here? Knight e4. Knight e4. Knight e4, that's it. Yeah, wow. You understand this, this chess. So, there is a threat of knight f6 check which is met by, correctly, by takes, and now takes back. And this is very uh, strange. Well, what should white play here? Queen takes pawn. Queen takes pawn? <laughs> no, no, it's a little bit too, a little bit too much. 18th century. Yeah, a little bit too much there. King takes queen might be a good response to that. Knight g5. Knight g5. Why is that a good move? Queen e7. Yeah, rook takes g6. Well, that, the move. that is the move.
move of a sensible human being. <laughs> pawn takes pawn, h takes g6. If you were a 2500 player, you would play h takes g6 immediately. He played rook g1. <laughs> Which is a lousy move. I mean, just a really lousy move. Now, black, all he has to do is play a move like rook f8, giving the exchange back and with a, a huge advantage for, for, for black. You avoid the mate, you avoid any sort of attack. Instead, he went rook e7 takes, takes, here, and suddenly it's getting a bit dangerous. Rook e1, that's a bit unfortunate, <laughs> but g takes h7 is, uh, is, a, is a massive threat, and king h8 can be met by g7 check. So here, he's basically, he's, he's got stuffed. So he went here, took, and resigned. Okay. Nice, humorous, and expert analysis from Grandmaster Nigel Short. He showed a number of other games from this tournament played in Dundee in Scotland from the Irishman George MacDonald. And he finished the night by showing a wonderful game from himself. Hope you enjoyed this entertaining analysis from Grandmaster Nigel Short. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel, and I'm looking forward to reading your comments. You also may want to check my other channel, Chess to Progress. There's a lot of video material there as well. This is Rick from Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.